Hello. Hello, my friend. You are welcome to this channel and to this video. Thank you to those of you who suggested today's topic for this video. Today's topics is Know Your Enemy, Spiritual Warfare, Weapons and Tactics. The spiritual realm has two kingdoms. The Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Satan. The Kingdom of God, is love, life, light and peace. The Kingdom of Satan is death, darkness, destruction, and turmoil. The difference is black and white. There is no gray area. Each human has to choose freely, which kingdom to belong to. If anyone wants to switch from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God, he has to follow the protocol, the only way, the narrow road, and the only entrance door to the kingdom of God. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. To be accepted in the kingdom of God it requires believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, confessing Jesus is Lord, and getting baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To have victorious life, it requires dedication, full submission to God, and commitment to endure until the end. Those who belong to the kingdom of God are the temple of the living God. The fullness of God dwells within them. They are called the children of God. They are citizens of heaven, where God live, and are his ambassadors upon the earth. They represent God's interest, intent, and share his message upon the earth. Therefore, believers in Jesus Christ are enemies to the kingdom of Satan. No human in the right mind choose the kingdom of Satan over God's unless deceived or ignorant of the schemes and devices of Satan. That is why God loved the whole world. Jesus died for the whole world, and his salvation is available for all who believe. The Bible says on Ezekiel 33 verse 11, As I live, declares the Lord God. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11 says, We shouldn't be ignorant of Satan's devices and his evil schemes so that Satan will not outsmart us. What are these Satan devices or schemes? First we need to know that Satan is the father of lies, he is an accuser. He is a deceiver, he is a thief that comes only to steal, kill and destroy. Second, we need to be aware that the weapons are spiritual and invisible to the human eye, but discerned by the spirit. Weapons and Tactics Here are some of Satan's weapons and tactics we must be aware. Satan uses pride, self-righteousness, envy, self-seeking, confusion, ignorance, disappointment, discouragement, doubt, division, lust for forbidden pleasures. He gives heavy burdens hard to bear deprives things we want most, in effort to wear us down. Cause shipwreck through some sudden unexpected and drastic change, just like he did to Paul. Unusual circumstantial calamity, to make us question God, or complain, or accuse God, just as the story of Job. Puts on the pressure in circumstances that you are least equipped to handle. The story of Peter's denial of Christ illustrates this device distracts us with things we need least by keeping us busy with worldly problems and pursuits. The life of Martha illustrates this device. Martha was busy with much serving rather than listening to Jesus, like Mary. Severe depression and mental instability, just like Saul. Physical maladies, just like the woman who had been crippled by a spirit of infirmity for 18 years, in Luke 13 verse 11. Satan distracts us from our time of prayer, so that our ability to hear God and walk in the Spirit will be minimized. This will allow him to bring fear, terror, and defeat. Therefore, we are instructed to pray without ceasing. Satan uses fiery darts that can inflame us and provoke us to let our emotions run uncontrolled. For example, he throw at us a fiery darts of words that can make us angry. Hoping it will result in sin if we fail to deal with it before the sun goes down. Satan incites persecution. As stated on 1 Peter 5 verse 8, and Revelation 2 verse 10. He provokes imprisonment and causes their martyrdom. Satan hinders God's people, as he did to Paul, hindering him from visiting the church in Thessalonica. Satan works in our thoughts to make us walk in the flesh rather than the spirit. 
If he succeed, he will bring accusation, doubt, guilt, and condemnation. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 6 says, Satan wage war on our minds using his thoughts, reasoning, and arguments. If he succeeds, then he will build wrong mindsets or strongholds in us that will resist the knowledge of God. Therefore, we are instructed to assess the nature of our thoughts constantly, if they are not good, reject them instantly. Any thoughts that occupy our minds constantly will become part of us. By taking deep roots going from our mind, deep into our hearts. When you want to stop thinking about something, but unable to stop it or control it. Let it be known to you the thoughts are absolutely originated from the enemy and the pressure thereof. God is a gentleman. His thoughts do not have any pressure at all. The solution is to occupy your mind constantly with the Word of God. So that the enemy will not get a chance to succeed. The analogy for this is, try to add water on a full glass. It does not work unless you find an empty glass to fill in. Satan cannot push his thoughts on you if you are already full. It is imperative to control our thoughts, our spiritual life depends on it. Satan plays games with our minds to get us to believe that which is false is true. That which is bad is good, that which is wrong is right. He pushes inaccurate and faulty thinking, as described on 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. He gives itching ears or turns ears away from the truth because it seems boring, as described on 2 Timothy 4. If we know Satan's mind games, we can be prepared to resist them. Like walking through a camouflaged minefield we must always be alert to the danger of satanic deception. We must be aware of our enemy's weapons and tactics. These are not exhaustive lists but are just some of the examples. Even though the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Satan controls the world systems, institutions, and structures through his offsprings, Nephilim. The system works using fear, control, manipulation, injustice, disease, and financial crisis. Satan has also spiritual agents, and human agents those who will agree. And accept Satan leadership at whatever level they will acquiesce. Satan and all of his forces work constantly against the kingdom of God. That is why they harass mankind constantly, disturbing our peaceful, quiet life, godly and in a dignified way. You might ask, man was created in God's image, pure and holy, where does all these evil in the world come from? The answer is found in Genesis 6 verse 1 to 4, it is because of Nephilim. You might ask who are Nephilim? Nephilim are hybrid children of fallen angels and human women. They have the appearance of men, but the heart of Satan. They passionately hate and devour mankind. They afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth. Cause trouble on mankind. They are mentioned throughout the Bible. God makes a distinction between wicked mankind and Nephilim in their punishment. God's instructions towards Nephilim is severe genocidal. Here are a few scriptures, 1 Samuel 15, Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Numbers 31, Kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. God gave these instructions to protect the future generations. Nephilim are like spiritual cancer that spread and destroy God's people. Nephilim was one of God's purposes for flooding the earth in Noah's time. To proclaim the healing of the earth. The book of Enoch and Jubilees gives more details on Nephilim, Genesis 6 verse 1 to 4. Nephilim taught by their fathers, fallen angels, the eternal secrets, which were preserved in heaven. The secrets were not allowed upon the earth because they are not suitable for man's nature, it will make mankind perish. Nephilim introduced upon the earth the making of swords, knives, shields, breastplates, which led to battle to slain one another, great destruction on the earth, bloodshed, and murder. Nephilim introduced upon the earth metals work such as bracelets, ornaments, and the use of antimony, and the beautifying of the eyelids all kinds of costly stones, all coloring tinctures, which led to fornication and uncleanness. 
they taught them charms and enchantments, cutting of roots, and made men acquainted with plants or herbal medicine, revealed to them all kinds of sins, lawless deeds, oppression and unrighteousness. You may wonder, who are the Nephilim of our time? Are they polluting the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the animals, the agriculture food, the water, etc., in our time, just like they did before the flood of Noah? Are they advancing in weapons that destroy mankind? Do they have systems that steal, kill, and destroy? Are they causing so much pain to mankind? Have you ever seen them? Can you identify them? Yes, you can if you give attention to what you see and hear. Check all people who brought new things upon the earth in our time, technology, chemical weapons, biological weapons, genetically modified crops, hormones on meat and fish, chemicals on water, medical research laboratories that create pandemics, etc. Check their family tree, and see if all of them are from the same lineage. Check if they are Satan worshippers. Check their philanthropy organizations, are they advocate of abortion, are they pushing depopulation agenda, are they involved in anything that harm or destroy humans? Listen to their speeches carefully, do they express opinions of hate to mankind? Check if their act reflect Satan's nature, population control, lie and manipulate through media, etc. Check who and how many families are controlling the whole world systems. Check if they were the planners and executed of the two world wars, and planned the third. Check if they are the source and launchers of world political ideologies that pushes nations to divide and facilitates wars. The battle is on. God said he will build his church, a gathering of God's community, upon the earth. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There's a spiritual battle the church is always going to have to fight. The enemy will find all kinds of ways to try to silence the church. The devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It is an invisible spiritual battle. Our battle is against principalities, and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies, Nephilim upon the earth, and human agents. The Bible says Satan is defeated by the cross of Jesus Christ. However, he is not yet thrown into his final judgment place, the lake of fire. His time is short, and rushing to take as many people as possible with him. By doing so, his aim is to grief God, because hell is not created for man. God does not want mankind to go to hell. That is why he provided the forgiveness of sin and eternal life through believing in Jesus Christ. This provision has made Satan very angry, because man is rescued, and forgiven. But not Satan for his pride and downfall. Man now is a worshipper of God in spirit and truth, Satan has lost his worship leadership role. Man can now ascend to heaven and enter directly to the throne room of God in prayer. Satan is thrown out of heaven where God dwells. We are elevated seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places far above Satan and his kingdom. Satan is going to the pit of hell, the lowest of low places. Armor of God for the Battle We are instructed to wear full armor of God for battle, this includes a helmet of salvation, bracelet of righteousness, belt of truth, the gospel of peace, the word of God, our faith, standing firm and praying in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Our spiritual weapon in the battle also include, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, our hope in Christ Jesus, our worship, and praise, etc. The battle also needs our total submission and trust on God, and resisting Satan. Our submission to God involves obedience, total surrender, acknowledging Him in all our ways being led by his spirit a life of gratitude giving meditation on his love renewing our mind etc the process of resisting the devil will require engaging in spiritual warfare prayer and pushing back the wicked satan's human agents who work against the kingdom of god we engage in war knowing that god is with us in fighting for us in isaiah 41 verse 10 god said fear not for i am with you be not dismayed, 
for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jeremiah 1 verse 19, They will fight against you but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 15, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Deuteronomy 3 verse 22, Do not fear them, for the Lord your God is the one fighting for you. Isaiah 59 verse 19, When the Satan comes in like a flood, with pressure, force, raging, and rushing. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up the battle standard against him. God will rush in with splendor and might, and his banner, or battle standard would fly high for all to see. The breath and wind of God, shall push our enemies into surrender. Isaiah 46 verse 4, Even when you are old, I will take care of you, even when you have gray hair, I will carry you. I made you and I will support you, I will carry you and rescue you. Joshua 1 verse 9, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or intimidated because of them. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isaiah 54 verse 17, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Zechariah 4 verse 6, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. The best way to stop an attack is to counterattack. The best defense is an offense. Wage a militant warfare against the enemy. Remember, when the devil tries to attack you, he is indirectly trying to attack God and we all know God wins every time. If God is for us who can be against us? Greater is he who is in us than he who is against us. We are more than conquerors through God who loved us. Jesus has come to destroy the works of Satan. He disarmed Satan's kingdom. Rulers and authorities and put them to open shame, by triumphing over them by the cross. Jesus said take heart. I have overcome the world. Have peace, as you will have trouble in this world. The Lord will cause our enemies who rise against us to be defeated before us. They shall come out against us one way and flee before us seven ways. We have given authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt us. Whatever will bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. If two of us on earth agree about anything we ask for, it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We fight the good fight of the faith. One of us puts to flight a thousand, and two of us put ten thousand to flight. For the Lord our God is he who fights for us, just as he promised. When we get tired and weary, we will wait on the Lord, he will renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings like eagles, we shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. When we get tempted by what is common to mankind, faithful God will provide a way out so that we can endure it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We know the truth, God is for us, and this truth will lead us to victory and total freedom. The psalmist said, through you we will push back our adversaries. Through your name we will trample down those who rise up against us. In conclusion, our God created all things, in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him, for himself. Our God is a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign with justice and righteousness forever. Our God is love, the Father of all, merciful and Savior, eternal God. The Lord of hosts, there is no other God besides our God.
the only true God, the only wise God, the author and finisher of our faith, our strength in battle, our sustainer and victory, the first and the last, holy and awesome God. He is the King of glory, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. I am glad the result of battle is known from the beginning. The end is victory of our God's kingdom. Prayer Dear Heavenly Father, Lord of all might and majesty, bind the power of Satan, block the progress of Satan, banish the presence of Satan, and free his prisoners. Open the eyes of unbelievers to the gospel. Draw them by your Spirit, so none will perish but all come to the knowledge of you. Let heaven be full, and hell be empty. O Lord, let your kingdom come, and your will be done. In this world, in your church, in my heart. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Lord, like David, train our hands for war, and our fingers for battle. Arm us with strength and keeps our way secure. Make our feet like the feet of a deer, cause us to stand on the heights. Provide a broad path for our feet, so that our ankles do not give way. Order our steps, so we will not stumble and fall. Lord, hold our hands, let your right hand sustain us. Help us to pursue our enemies and crush them completely. Totally destroy them, and they could not rise again. Help us to defeat them all, and put them under our feet. We pray this in the name of Jesus. We thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. My friend, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, and give you peace. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. Please give me feedback by pressing any buttons, subscribe, or thumbs up button, or write comments. Have a blessed night. Goodbye for now, until we meet again.